Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to The Edit Place. And last week over on my main channel, I released a video about basically recreating top five of my favorite YouTubers kind of A-roll setups. And while that video went crazy in depth of how I set up the lights and cameras and lenses and all the physical hardware stuff, I wanted to show you kind of the behind the scenes of how I color graded to attempt to match them to each of these creators as close as I could since everyone shoots on different cameras. So without any further delay, let's jump into it. Alrighty everybody, so let's jump right into here. So first you can see this is the full project for the YouTube video. Uh, again, if you wanna check it out, link is in the description down below or the little card probably above here. Uh, but we're going to be focused just on uh, these specific shots, kind of the final versions of each individual person and going to kind of show you how I color graded each one to match as close as I could and talk about why I couldn't get it perfect. The only one that we're not really going to talk about is I Justine's because I totally botched the actual uh, filming on set. The pink RGB tube that I had in the back is way too overpowering so you can see these aren't really matching whatsoever. So first, let's start with Potato Jet here. Now, all right, we have our setup here, and first thing I'm gonna do is add a handful of nodes. Now, his videos are pretty realistic, so there's nothing too crazy here. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just apply a basic kind of uh, conversion LUT here. Whoops, not onto his clip. Same thing, <laughs> apply it here. Uh, and so that's just going to give us kind of a basic, you know, more realistic approach to everything. As we can see, the nice thing about doing this side by side, and of course you can uh, set your preferences if you don't actually have a side by side clip. Um, but for here, it makes it even easier because I can see both images scopes on here. And so this is basically one big cheat sheet. So I can see his image is kind of the left 50% of the histogram and uh, on the right is my image. So as I go to bring up mine, bring up my midtones, and basically just try and match his as close as possible here. And you can see that uh, we're doing pretty well. I definitely need to add some more vibrancy. So I'm going to add some saturation. Uh, we have a lot of different skin tones that we're messing with here. And it's just going to be at some point the creators themselves aren't going to match even if you get the background perfect. However, uh, I can help myself a little bit by uh, giving myself a little bit of a tan. So I'm going to select my skin here, widen it a little bit. It's always a good idea to blur and denoise the heck out of it. That way it kind of blends into the image better. And now I'm just going to kind of push that towards the reds a little bit. There we go, we can see it. There's off, on, boom. So it just adds a little bit more warmth into my skin. And then the last thing we're gonna do is add a little vignette. Uh, I'm not going to do an outside vignette where I brighten the uh, my self actually up here just cause it looks like He's not, not doing anything too crazy because product's constantly going in and out. But I'm just going to add kind of a basic vignette here. Invert it. I'm going to select just our Luma curve here. And I'm going to bring that down a bit. Alrighty. And again, considering we don't have the same identical set and I tried to match as close as possible uh, while filming, uh, we got a nice little basic grade here. So let's move on to the next shot here. Now we have the Becky and Chris setup. So they definitely have a more stylistic approach. And so while I could add kind of this uh, basic grade here, and that looks honestly pretty good, I'm actually going to try something. And so I'm just going to turn this one off for now. Now I'm going to head over to my Lutify LUTs. Uh, I really like these, and I'm a really big fan of uh, Black Panther LUTs here, and I actually need to go to the log ones. These are Rec. 709. You can check these out in the link in the description. 
Uh, honestly, this pack is the reason I don't make my own love packs because these are so good. And so I'm going to apply this and I kind of like it. Uh, in order to match theirs, theirs always has like this tint of green and honestly, I'm a huge fan of it. So I'm actually going to head that way a little bit. Let's go too far. And I'm kind of, I'm kind of comparing their gray uh, and black wardrobes to mine. Okay. And now, of course, we need to fix our exposure a bit. Now we can see on theirs that they go for a little bit more cinematic look uh, where it's not completely pushed all the way to the top end. It's actually a little bit down, which is kind of nice. I'm going to pull down the mid-tones a bit. And a lot of uh, color correcting, color grading is kind of just squeezing and pulling your mid-tones and then compensating with the highlights and to get it just right. Feeling right about there. I'm going to add color boost a little bit. Yeah, it's adding a little bit more blue than I want. We'll go saturation. All right, and we're still, we're pushing blue there, so I'm going to offset it a little bit. And that's looking pretty good. I still want to take a little bit of blue out. Let's see. Uh, I'm going to try on a new node here. I'm going to use the new color warper. This thing's pretty cool. And you can just basically select the color tone that you want. And so we can see that all these grays are very much on the blue side. If you take a peek uh, down here, uh, I'm not clicking anything. I'm just hovering my mouse and it kind of gives you a live preview. So I'm going to select here and drag it towards the middle. We'll help desaturate it. And feeling right about there. If I turn it on and off, you can see it took kind of the blue out of the deep shadows there, kind of like that. Uh, and now I'm going to work on my skin a little bit. There's, uh, they record on Sony, I believe. And so it's got pretty kind of interesting skin tones. And of course I'm shooting on black magic. So I'm going to try to match this a bit better. And again, uh, just like last time we're going to do this and do noise. Going to blur. And now I'm going to push the offset. And in terms of completely different cameras, completely different color sciences, I have a feeling that's as close I can get it with uh, while still being pretty realistic. And then the last thing we're going to add again is another vignette, partially because you can tell that they have one and the single source lighting that I talked about in the other video helps with that. Uh, I have a smaller one behind me as you can see. But I also, this black wall doesn't cover the entire camera field so you can see a little corner of the stairwell up there. But anyway, I'm just going to make kind of a bigger uh, thing there. I'm going to invert, go back here, Luma, and just going to pull it down. And for this one, it's going to be pretty dramatic because theirs kind of falls off. So as I said in the other video, I don't have as cool props or fake plants or anything. So again, excluding the lack of texture there, I think this is a pretty decent look. Wish I had a white table or wish I had a wood table because that would have made it like that much better. But again, more about planning. All right, let's move on to this one here. Uh, this is Armando's, and this one was uh, a lot of fun. He definitely goes for cinematic style, and uh, he shoots on Canon for the most part, I believe. This definitely looks like Canon color science, and I absolutely love uh, the skin tones and just the overall tones that uh, his camera gives uh, with his specific grade. 
So I'm going to try and not completely butcher it up here. Again, I'm actually going to start with the same Black Panther uh, 2 LUT from the MLUTify. And now we're just going to get to work here. We can see uh, our scopes here. I have one that's kind of crazy just because I have a much bigger light source, which this is pretty much always going to remain clipped. So I'm just going to try and match this here. I think it could use with a little bit of contrast. Not too sharp because you can tell his still has a softness element to it. Just a little bit. And I'm actually just going to lower the highlights a bit. All right, and again, our back wall here is going kind of blue. So again, I'm going to use the color warper and I'm going to grab hold of it and kind of push it center. I'm not going to go all the way to the center, just somewhere right around there. Now I definitely need to uh, fix my skin tones here because looking pretty vampire-y. Now if I wanted, I could use a mask to single out this light here, but I think it's fine. Going to widen it, denoise, blur. And adjust my offset. Again, we don't share the same skin tone, so that is not going to match perfectly. Kind of like in right around there. Ugh, my skin is so gross. I'm going to add a little bit of saturation back in too. I'm going to add quite a bit and then I'm actually going to just lower the output. This is kind of like a blend Maybe somewhere around there. And then just a quick little vignette here. Uh, this one's going to be pretty light. And I'm going to do it a little bit more focused on me. And his definitely isn't very dramatic, but it does look like there's a little bit of one there. So I'm not going to pull us all the way down here. Gonna hover it right around, right around there. Brings it out just a little bit here. And yeah, that's kind of uh, how I got uh, as close as I could to Armando's. And finally, let's move on to MKBHD, the king of crispy here. So here is a really different setup, and this is actually, um, if you get it right in camera, one of the more easier grades. So Again, kind of like Potato Jet, he goes for a very like realistic, but very like crispy and bright look here. So we're not going to use any crazy LUTs on this one. We're going to use our simple conversion to give us that realistic look. And then you can see that our scopes are near identical right off the bat because uh, I got the exposure to where basically there's a lot of white. Nothing is clipped. Everything is very you know, well exposed just under that uh, clipping highlight area. But we're definitely going to add some contrast. That's going to help bring kind of me out from the background and make things a little extra crispy. And we're going to pull down the highlights just a tad to make sure don't clip anything. I'm going to add a little bit of mid-tone detail usually around just around eight or ten going to add in some saturation and then what I'm actually going to do just to 
Because I feel like in my shot, like the background's really good, but I feel like I'm a little bit just underexposed. And so I'm actually going to add a vignette, but instead of doing, well, you know what, I'll do, I'll do both. So I'll show you here. So what I'm going to do is move that out of the way. Uh, and I'm going to add a normal vignette just like I did last time. So add my Luma and ever so subtly when you have white, it looks really ugly if you do a strong one because it just looks like that. Uh, so this one's going to be real subtle right around there. And then I'm going to right click and hit add node. Uh, but this time I'm going to add a outside node. And what that does is basically gives you the opposite mat of the previous one. So technically it's the inside node, but since I reverted uh, or inverted this mat, now this is uh, kind of considered the outside. And so now on the same uh, Luma curve here, I'm going to ever so slightly bring that up and I'm going to bring this down, basically creating an, a very slight S curve, which is gonna add some contrast here. I'm also going to increase the mid-tones a bit. Alrighty. And there you kind of have the crispier, brighter MKBHD look. So what'd you guys think? I know they're not dead on. I probably could have spent way more time on each one, perfectly dialing it in. And also remember that we all shoot on different cameras. So my entire video was shot on the Pocket 6K and other people are Canon users. There's some Sony users, uh, big sensors, small sensors, everything in between, glasses all different and everyone used different brands of lights. So overall, with the exception of iJustine's, I'm pretty happy with how they all turned out. What do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments below. And yeah, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.